Hello everyone, welcome back to the lecture series for NATA and JE2 preparation. Today on day 3, we will be looking into the topic of important logos. I hope you already are aware about the lecture series which we are doing in this 51 videos. In these 51 day video series, we will cover the entire syllabus of both NATA examination and also JE paper 2 examination. If you uh, if you are not if you are new to this course, you can start from day one. You can have a view at the video in which we are explaining, which we have explained the overall structure. To just give you a bit of perspective towards it. We have divided the entire syllabus of NATA and JE2 into these eight modules. And today on day three, we are still in module number one, which is basics of design. Under this particular module, we are on day three, that is important logos. Now, important logos is one of the most important topics from NATA point of view. There have been a lot of questions in recent times from this topic. So, uh, before I start with the lecture of important logos, let me briefly give you an idea towards what type of questions you can expect in the NATA examination. However, for better understanding, you can go through. There is a separate video. There is a separate video on the same YouTube channel where we have put up a, a full explanation of logo based questions, how to tackle with logo based questions. Go and watch that video. You will get a good idea as to what are the various types of questions asked from logo logo uh, in NATA examination, particularly. And also, we have solved the NAT logo and symbol based questions of last two years in that video. So, have a look at that video. You'll get an idea what is the weightage, what are the types of questions, and how to solve them. You will get a better understanding. But just to put uh, give you an introduction to today's important logos lecture. You will find a lot of videos, lot of lectures on the internet as well to learn about logos. But the best way to prepare logos for NATA examination is to properly structure them into categories and then study. So even in today's lecture, we will do a systematic analysis, systematic study of logos and understand the meaning also in most cases. So the questions asked in NATA are of three types from logo based questions. Type number one. The simple one is identifying the logo. They'll give you a logo and ask you this logo belongs to which company or this logo uh, sometimes instead of giving the full logo, they may give you part of the logo or sometimes they will give you four different options and ask you which is the correct logo. Like for example, in NATA in 2021, there was a question where they gave four options of uh, Google's logo and they asked pick up the correct one. Right, So you get such questions identifying the correct logo of a com company or identifying the name of a uh, name of the company associated with the given logo. So that is type number one basically associating. So you need to know okay, this is the company. This is the correct logo for it. That is that's type number one. Type number two is identifying the category. So they will uh, they'll give you four options and ask you which of the following logo is associated with a car brand automobile car brand. So or they will ask you which of the following logo is associated with the food brand. So you can get such questions, categories. Okay, these are automobile brands. These are uh, food brands. These are apparel brands. You have to know those categories. That is type two. Type three is understanding the meaning of a logo. In most cases, when a company gives a logo to its uh, enterprise, they associate a meaning to it. So this is the third type. So there are three types of NATA based questions, as I told you identifying the logo and the company associated with it, identifying the grouping of the company, identifying the meaning of a given logo. So in this lecture, in this video of logo based questions, we will not randomly just look at logos and look into the name, but we will understand the basics which are required to answer such questions in NATA examination. I am sure you will not find such an informative resource on the internet anywhere to learn about logo based questions. So this is one of the most important videos. So stay tuned till the end and also be interactive. If you have any doubts, you can put it into the comments. If I ask some questions, you can put it into the comments so that you also so stay engaged in this learning process and we also get our encouragement to produce good quality videos to you in your NATA preparation. So with that, let me start with the first grouping. So we, for the ease of this lecture, we have divided all the logo uh, logos into categories, into 20 different categories. So we will go category by category, even in our study material, even in the free study resources which we are providing on the app, we follow the same structured uh, layout of logos for your self study as well. So if you're purchasing KP classes study material, you will find such structured way of compilation of the logos, which will assist you in your best possible preparation for these logo based questions. So let me start with category one, which is automobile companies. So uh, uh, automobile companies are basically various car brands. Now there are 
hundreds of car brands in the world uh, and a lot in india as well so for the lecture purpose we will focus on seven to eight important ones uh, or around eight important ones mainly the luxury brands so starting with the first one this is the logo for the or this is the emblem for the automobile brand of posh so if you look into the logo of it what are the colors so try to understand the colors also what are the things you need to remember identifying the identify the design remember the colors and try to look into the fonts used you can get questions so if if for case for instance in nata you get four options of posh logo and they'll ask you which is the correct logo you need to know this is the font which uses horizontal lines so try to look into those details spend some time on each and every logo and have a good analysis of the components in it so starting with the first one that is posh the first and foremost point you need to identify is the colors in it the colors used here are gold black and red actually the reason why these colors are mainly black and red were selected was because these colors are associated with the flag of this particular city Württemberg in Germany so this is the place where this company took its birth so there is a strong link between the logo and the flag and emblem of that particular city or state in Germany. So the use of gold particularly and the shape, the shield shaped uh, logo of it gives a look of luxury, regal and modernness to this particular logo. That is point number one. So two things we discuss. Point number one, the color composition is red, black and red, uh, gold mainly because of gold and the shape of it. It gets this regal and modern luxury look because it's a luxury brand that is point number one and two as i told you the use of colors is based on this particular uh, state flag of Wittenberg. the capital of this particular the capital city the main city where this company took its work is stuttgart so the name of that city also is written in the logo so if you are getting a question of identifying the correct, correct logo you will be able to identify the correct posh logo by looking into the color scheme by looking into the horse in the center and also the name of the city where it took its birth so that is number one that is the first logo so we looked into the color scheme the meaning of it the look of it basically and also the use of horse so horse is associated with that city because that city is known for uh, famous for horse farms so you have depiction of horse the name of the city also is mentioned so the logo is very much linked with the city where this company took its birth that is the first company posh number one second important automobile brand or automobile logo we are looking into is mercedes mercedes benz so this particular company uses a three-pointed star mercedes benz mercedes uses a three-pointed star in its logo and this three-pointed star represents the uh, the target or the uh, the, uh, the aim of this company to dominate all the three fields that is air land and sea so the the universal motorization that's the target of this company and they want to represent the land air and sea so their engines they want to cover all the three arenas land based vehicles air and also sea so that is the representation of the three pointed logo in mercedes that is number two third important logo is audi there was a question in NATA 2022 on the logo of Audi. What is the meaning of the logo or the emblem of Audi? So it uses these four circles. Audi uses a four circle logo and these four circles represent the four companies which came together to form this company. So there were four different automobile manufacturers in the German state of Saxony. And these four automobile manufacturers came together and formed a single company by name Audi. So that's the reason there are four circles which overlap each other in the logo for Audi. That is number three. Fourth important automobile brand we are looking into is BMW. BMW uses a, a circular logo which is divided into four quadrants and two alternative quadrants are shaded blue in color two alternative quadrants are shaded in white shade so this basic the the origin of this logo or the inspiration for this logo is attributed to the spinning airplane propeller because initially during world war ii bmw produced a lot of airplanes the airplane engines it is said that it manufactured more than 60,000 airplane propellers or engines during world war ii so bmw is a well-known company which manufactured initially airplane propellers and that logo is inspired from the airplane propeller which gives a similar pattern when it spins so that is the 
fourth important logo so we discussed four important automobile logos and briefly the meaning of these logos so it is not just by having the meaning you have to look into the logos and analyze them understand the design features and remember remembering the color scheme remembering the shape remembering the type of font these aspects are very important download the free study resources available on kp classes app where we have a compilation of all these logos also so you can look into that uh, notes and then analyze the meaning of uh, you can also maintain your own running notes uh, for each and every logo here so i'll tell you further details about these fonts which are used in logos but try to remember in posh you have those horizontal lines which are emphasized in the type of logo used here right so even bmw over here so next few more important automobile brands number 5 is ferrari if you look into the logo of ferrari it is a white back it is a yellow background with an italian flag on the top this is an it tell you the other companies which we discussed in the previous slide they were german based companies this one is an italian company italian luxury brand of automobiles and cars so there is representation of the flag of italy on the top and there is a representation of black horse on the yellow background so yellow background that's the color color, color used here and the symbolism why did they use this a flying horse represented on a yellow background because it symbolizes passion courage and command so that is the symbolism behind this particular logo and uh, as i told you italian flag on the top because it is an italian based company if you look into the font carefully ferrari the name of ferrari the, the top horizontal line of f runs till the end above all the words so try to look into these details that is also important now in this context i want to tell you one very important point with respect to the font used here in graphic design fonts are categorized into two types you have serif fonts and sans serif fonts you have to make a note of these points into your notes and this is very crucial in analyzing the logos of any company so in any logo whenever you have a name you need to identify look if it is a sans font or is if it is a serif font or sans serif font <coughs> excuse me serif or sans serif so what is the meaning of serif and sans serif let us try to understand that then i'll continue about these logos and this point is crucial not only for automobiles for all the brands you have to look into this serif font is something like what you see in the logo of ferrari the bottom lines of if you look into f generally we write f this way with two horizontal lines but in the logo of ferrari you also have these small elements at the end so you have at the base you have this element even at the end of this f you have an element right so that basically represents a serif font serif font if you similarly look into this particular logo of jaguar here do you have these small horizontal elements at the end no so this is a sans serif font you don't have those extensions so in logos where you find extensions at the end such logos or such fonts are known as serif fonts remember this term serif fonts are where you don't where you have the extensions serif is having these extensions at the end of the fonts sans serif on the other hand no extension actually the word sans serif sans is basically without without extensions remember it that way so serif font and sans serif font are the two types of fonts which you have to remember in the logos and there are very few logos where you will find serif fonts like ferrari in the logo of ferrari you have a serif font there are those extensions at the in jaguar do you have extensions no this is sans serif font if you can go back and check the previous slide also if you look into the logo of posh comment down your answer whenever i ask you a question even if you know the answer don't just think the answer in your mind try to put it either into your notes or in the comment box below that way you will understand if you're answering correctly or not you will get a better understanding of your progress right so make make a comment over uh, at the bottom of this video in the comment section what type of font is used in porsche is it serif or sans serif serif is having extensions at the end sans serif is having no extensions bmw also comment down is it serif or sans serif and i'm sure in 90% of the logos which we are discussing in today's class more than 90% of the logos you will find sans serif fonts only serif fonts are where you have those extensions which are very rare in logo designing uh, generally serif fonts are used in print medium in newspapers and all but not in logos uh, ferrari is an exception it uses a 
serif font as I told you because there are extensions. So moving further in this lecture, in all the logos we are discussing, whenever we have name of a company written in the logo, try to look into the type of font. If it is serif or sans serif, that is very crucial. That will really help you in identifying the correct logos from the given options in the NATA examination. That is number five, Ferrari. Let us now look into the sixth logo that is Volkswagen. <coughs> The logo of Volkswagen is represented by the initials of the company Volks V and Wagon W. So it represents V and W. So V stands for Volks, W stands for Wagon, which essentially translates to people's vehicle. It's a German word. Volks is people, Wagon is vehicle, people's vehicle. So that's the origin of the name of the company and the logo of it. The circle here, the circle represents the concept of community and inclusion. So including everyone because it's considered to be a wagon for the normal people. So inclusion of the community. That is the concept of this logo. So you can get questions in NATA exam where they give you the logo or they ask you what is the meaning of the given logo. Like they asked in last year, they gave logo of Audi and asked what is the meaning of the logo of Audi. If they ask you what is the meaning of the logo of Volkswagen, V W V stands for Volks, W stands for wagon. It's generally used in blue shade and a circle represents the community and inclusion. So remember in your notes also write down Volkswagen, community and inclusion. That is the main point which you need to remember. That is number six Volkswagen. Seventh important brand of automobiles over here is Jaguar. Look into the font and comment down your answer. I already told you the answer, but even then comment down if you can remember or not what type of font is it? Jaguar, is it serif font or sans serif font? Comment down the answer, that is very important. So the symbolism behind this logo Jaguar, Jaguar actually is a type of and is it's an animal. So a leaping Jaguar is represented in the logo and the open roaring face of it the face is designed as if it's roaring so that roaring jaguar represents the that's the meaning it represents the elegance performance power and ambition ambition to leap forward so it is not a normal jaguar it is leaping forward so that logo of jaguar that dynamic logo dyn it represents dynamism i have told you about what is dynamic uh, dynamism in design movement so there is a movement represented in jaguar that basically represents the ambition to leap forward the power of that animal basically the performance and elegance that is the represent that's the meaning behind the logo of jaguar and the type of font used here it is a sans serif font without extensions that is number seven eighth important brand of automobiles is rolls royce which again is a luxury brand and the logo is simply originated by using over overlapping two r's the first star stands for Rolls and the second star stands for Rolls. Rolls Royce is a luxury automobile brand which uses this logo of overlapping R and R. And last and final logo number nine is Lamborghini. And Lamborghini is an Italian company. Again, the bull represents power of that. It's a sports car, which it's a brand for sports cars generally. And the bull uses the bull used on this logo. Uh, it represents the power of these vehicles. And again, comment down the answer. What type of font is it? Is it serif or sans serif? Again, I'm recalling, I'm repeating this point because I want you to engrave that point into your mind that serif font has extensions sans serif fonts has no extensions without extensions so comment down your answer is Lamborghini the font used in this logo is it serif or sans serif so uh, uh, again the use of bull is associated with the owner the person who started this company he himself was very much interested in bull fights and that's the reason this bull is represented in the logo of Lamborghini so that is number nine so in this video the first set we have completed that is automobile companies we discussed nine logos don't stop here. This is just the introduction or the, just the beginning. Consider this as your beginning and learn a lot more about other important brands. There are a lot many brands. Uh, you have Skoda, you have uh, normal, uh, not only luxury brands, you have the other brands like Maruti, Suzuki, right? So look into Indian brands as well, top uh, automobile brands, look into the logos and try to understand the meaning. So learn from, the, take this as your foundation and move ahead from here that's very important and in this context you can make use of our study resources to analyze or to understand all the logos in a better manner right in this as i told you already earlier you can download the kp classes app and you will find the free study resources to supplement your preparation in this particular video whatever so all these logos which we studied these are given in the free study material also download the kp classes app once you download it and sign up into it, you will find three horizontal bars on the left hand side of the screen. When you click onto it, you will have a side row which opens and you 
will find this study material tab. If you go into that, you will find free study resources for all the lectures which we are uploading in this free lecture series of 51 days. So access that. But if you want an even more structured preparation of all the logos, you should purchase KP classes, KP study material. That is the best in class study material for your NATA and GA preparation. You can purchase the study material right away from the app itself. So now that we completed the first set of logos, that is automobile companies. Let us now move on to the second set of uh, logos, which is central agencies, some central government agencies or central government uh, uh, departments in India. Starting with the first one, that is India Post. India Post has upgraded its logo. Uh, this is not the first logo of the company. It, uh, it was upgraded multiple times. And this is the present logo of India Post. First and foremost, the color scheme of it. Color scheme is red and yellow, which are both primary colors. Red, yellow and blue are the primary colors. We studied that in the color theory. If you don't remember, go watch and revise your day two lecture, which is color theory. Red and yellow are primary colors which are used in the logo of India Post. You get such questions also in the NATA examination. What type of color scheme is used in the given logo? So these are primary colors in this given logo. So, and the, the meaning of it, the meaning of this India Post, the red rectangle represents the envelope. Because what is India Post? What is its main work? It is postal service. They transfer your uh, posts and courier from place to place. So the red rectangle represents the envelope and those three yellow curvilinear lines which you see that represent the speed with which they deliver the post. So with speed, speed service of postal uh, delivery that is represented by those yellow lines, yellow curvilinear lines and the rectangle represents the envelope of the, the main and the, the base uh, of this logo it, it is the envelope symbolism for envelope and uh, what type of balance you see here we studied in principles of design this is asymmetrical balance where if you draw a vertical line it is not two equal halves but still it is a balanced composition why because on the left side you have wider strokes on the right side where the length is larger you have small thinner strokes so that is creating a asymmetrical balance in this logo remember the type of balance also that is number one the first central government agency which we discussed is india post we discussed the meaning the color scheme and the composition the type of balance you see in that logo second important you get meaning based questions in nata i'm repeating why are we studying all the meaning here because in nata they can give you this picture and ask you what is the meaning of this logo so you have to remember that it is envelope with representation of speed of delivery Number two, this is Ministry of Environment and Forest in India. In the central government, there are a lot of ministries. You have ministry, home ministry, you have finance ministry. There are a lot of ministries. And most of the ministries use the national emblem of India itself as the logo. What is national emblem of India? What you see in the center over here in this logo also. right? That is the representation of the four lions, uh, the national emblem. That is used as a logo but by most of the central government ministries. There are very few ministries which, that, which have their own logo like the Ministry of Environment and Forests. Ministry of Environment and Forests and Climate Change. Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change has its own logo which is represented here. So uh, you have a blue colored aquatic animal represented at the base. You have a tiger represented on the top and a human being, a person in the center, right? So this basically represents aquatic and terrestrial life both. Environment is not just animals on the land, it is animals in the sea also, right? So aquatic and terrestrial life is represented in this logo. The color scheme used here is red, green and blue. Red, green and blue are used in the green is used uh, in the circle and the central part. The bird also is represented here, right? Bird. So all the three land based animals, flying animals in the sky are also the aquatic animals all are represented in this logo so that's the symbolism of the logo for ministry and environment environment forest and climate change the next central government agency we're looking into is number three that is indian railways the in indian railways there are 17 different zones you have uh, north central south central railway you have northeastern railway so the railways throughout the country it is a very large network of railways which is divided into seven 17 zones so the logo of indian railways you it is generally published in two colors either in red or in blue there are two versions of the indian railways logos and what is the symbolism you have a steam engine in the center 
with the national emblem represented inside it national emblem is the lion emblem the we uh, we will also study about this national emblem when we discuss buddhist architecture in the history part moving further in the next uh, module so uh, you have the steam engine with the indian emblem at the center and also if you see the stars at the circumference at the, at the perimeter of this particular logo there are 17 stars represented and these 17 stars in the logo represent the 17 railway zones in the country so that is the symbolism of the indian railways logo steam engine national emblem because it's a central government agency 17 stars because there are 17 railway zones in the country so that is the symbolism of the third important logo in the central agencies so moving further to the next set of central government agencies number four actually these are not very important but i added these to just tell you one important aspect of central government agency. most of the central government agencies you will find the national emblem represented even in indian railways you have the national emblem represented even in this the national investigation agency nia it uses the national emblem even cbi central bureau of investigation it uses the national emblem in the center so the there is a lot of similarity between nia and cbi's logo the similarities use of national emblem use of blue color and use of those branches leaf branches which are used in the circumference of the logo so uh, national emblem is a common part here color composition here it is blue and gold here it is blue gold and red right so that's the color composition so there are similarities so similar logos you can group them together right so that is number four and five and the last important central government agency we will look into number six is isro isro is one of the most popular central government agency and we all celebrate when a successful rocket or launch vehicle or satellite launch takes place in the country and it is one of the most appreciated central government agency also in terms of public view so let us look into the logo of isro and get a detail or uh, get an understanding on it this is one of the important logos the color scheme here it is orange and blue which is very much evident from the picture the representation here it represents this orange spike over here that represents a rocket rocket is te in technical terms it is known as a launch vehicle because satellites are launched using it so the representation of the logo of isro uses a satellite and a launch vehicle satellite is represented by this horizontal line so you have this this is a launch vehicle's representation and the horizontal dotted line that makes it a satellite also so the logo is inspired from representation of launch vehicle and satellite that is point number one point number two the color is blue and orange point number three last and important point with respect to isro is the type of font used here right uh, again you don't find any sort of extensions but the name of isro is written both in hindi and also in english and if you look into the english font here there is a name for this type of font remembering that also is important this is a very special font which is specifically used in india it is an english font but you see there's a horizontal line running on the top just like how we use it in hindi so to make it a balanced logo because there is a horizontal line on the hindi part of the name even on the English part of the name, you have a horizontal line running. And it is somewhat similar to the Dev Nagari script, which is used in Hindi. Right? So the name of this English script is Prakrita. Remember this name. Prakrita is a script. It is a type of font. Script as in type of font. It is a type of font in English, which is similar to the Dev Nagari script of Hindi. So it is to maintain that symmetry, Isro is written in the Prakrita script. Remember the name of that font, Prakrita font. Right, that's a Indianized or Devanagari script version of English. Right, you can remember that way. Isro uses that font. You can get direct questions like what font is used in the Isro's logo for English part. It is Prakrita uh, font. That's the name of the font. So these are the central government agencies. With that, we have completed the second set of logos. So I told you we are categorizing. First, we categorize, we covered the cars, car brand, automobiles, second central government agencies. Let us now move on to the third set. Similarly, in this video, we will discuss 20 different sets. You also in your preparation should study 20 different sets. If you want to add on, you can add three or four more lists to uh, sets which are not discussed also. I will give you an idea how to move further with this lecture at the end. So let us now move on to the third set of logos, which is a very important set of logos again from NATA and JE point of view, mainly NATA point of view. You get questions on banks also, financial institutions. So the third set is the banking sector. Banking sector, we are covering both public and private. Public as in government banks, private as in 
non-government private banks so we will cover both few, some important public and private banks here firstly the first the largest private sector bank in india is hdfc bank so that is the first logo which you can see here hdfc bank even though it is a bank it was initially a financial institution which was uh, which was established to fund housing actually the term hdfc develops uh, uh, it, it basically stands for housing development finance corporation so it is basically a financial corporation which was established for housing sector so the logo basically is said to be a representative of a building house constructing house where the red so the color scheme here is blue and red red is generally attributed to use of bricks so you generally use bricks to make wall so using a so the logo represents a house under construction so that is the symbolism behind this logo and the color scheme is red and blue hdfc is the largest private sector bank in the country so remember blue square in the center now in the exam in nata exam when you get question if they ask you which of the following is the correct logo for hdfc they can interchange colors just to confuse you they can give the central square in red and this wall part in blue how to remember if you know the meaning the red bricks are used in the walls so remember that way. red part is for the outer blue square is in the center right uh, also in nata sometimes to confuse you instead of giving you the full logo they can just just give you half logo and ask you this is a part of which logo so you, have, you should have 100 percent understanding and well analysis well done analysis on each and every logo understanding the meaning also is important here that's the reason we are looking into that level of detail for each and every logo and uh, so that is the first important bank private sector bank that is hdfc the second important logo is the logo of sbi now there were a lot of public sector banks like state bank of hyderabad there were there were a lot of state sector uh, there were a lot of pri uh, these public banks which were together clubbed to form sbi recently so the logo of sbi uses a keyhole logo this is known as a keyhole logo and the color scheme is blue not only sbi you can remember this point many researchers range the, the generally if you say you take 100 different logos randomly more than 30 logos will be blue will be using blue or blue shades in it so there are a lot of researchers in graphic design which say that more than 30 percent some studies also say 40 percent 30 to 40 percent of all the logos in the world are based out of blue or blue shades so sba also uses blue because blue is a symbolism for trust and these public banks it is important for them to represent that people should trust them so blue represents trust so sbi uses that blue color a keyhole logo design and it is said that this logo is inspired from the kankaria lake you can see in this picture this is a satellite picture of kankaria lake where is it located kankaria lake is the second largest lake in Ahmedabad in gujarat so you can get questions the logo of sbi is inspired from which of the following water body it is inspired from kankaria lake the side <coughs> The satellite picture of Kankaria Lake is shown over here. So the you can see the similarity, the keyhole design. You have the water part. Now, if you see water is representing, so the water part is blue. So if you if you get a logo where this remaining part is white and the keyhole part is blue, will it be a correct answer? No. The blue part is representing the water surrounding here, and the land part is represented in the form of keyhole here. So remember the meaning remember the inspiration of the logo remember the color of the logo that is very important uh, moving to the third important bank that is pnb punjab national bank the logo of punjab national bank is inspired by so this is basically uh, a logo which is inspired from the gurumukhi script gurumukhi script is the script or type of font writing system used for punjabi because this is punjab national bank the logo is inspired from gurumukhi script you can remember the name jaise we discussed prakrita script which was used in ISRO's logo. Similarly, remember Punjab National Bank is inspired from Gurumukhi script, which is a script for Punjabi language. So this is inspired, the shape of it, Punjab National Bank, the power of it, it is inspired, said to be inspired from the Gurumukhi script of Punjab. So that is again a public sector bank in the country, in India. And the color scheme here is yellow mainly, yellow and also a shade of red, not red obviously, 
shade of red so uh, that is number three the third important logo that is punjab national bank uh, fourth and final important logo is icici bank and you can see the representation of i with a colorful spiral composition behind it forming the background to make that i stand out right and it is said that this represents the innovativeness of the banking sector of this particular public of this particular private bank so we looked into two important public banks and private banks private banks here hdfc and icici and public banks sbi and pnb you can get questions in nata exam where they will give you four options of which three will be government banks one will be private bank you can get such questions also they'll ask you identify the incorrect or uh, logo which is not into this set so to have a better understanding of this don't stop with these four logos of banks learn look into the other logo there are a lot of other banks you have access bank you have uh, so there are many other banks which you can look into and go through the list bank of baroda syndicate bank so there are a lot of banks look into the logos and try to understand the meaning also behind them so move further from what we are starting here one last point i have a question here with respect to this third set banking set look into all the logos here hdfc bank and the name is written icici bank the name is written pnb sbi you can see the words all these bank logos use a same group of fonts i told you there are two types of fonts serif and sans serif comment down your answer for the banking part what type of font is used in all these logos the same answer for everything because there are no extensions here at the end no extensions here at the end right so what type of font is it comment down your answer we will really be looking forward to your comments so tell me if it is serif on sans serif it is not just for us you also will have a better sense of involvement and understanding in this learning process that is very crucial in your preparation so comment down your answer what type of fonts are these serif or sans serif that is the third group of a third set of logos that is banking sector coming to the next set fourth set of uh, logos we are looking into the fourth uh, category we are covering independent agencies there are some agencies in the country which are not under state government not under central government there are they are independent agencies they are not a part of government they are basically out of the government they are independent agencies. so let us look into some important independent agencies the first and the most important one is election commission of india this is most important organization or agency which is responsible for all the government elections in india so the logo of election commission of india is designed with the tricolor the india the representation of the tricolor flag that is the main important symbol of india so election commission uses the logo which is inspired from the tricolor that is point number one point number two there are two letters which you see here you see the representation of e with these three horizontal lines and there is representation of i with the dot over here right so there's a meaning for it the letter e stands for election and equality because election commission of india is responsible for election and election in india election process in india is a very important democratic exercise where no one is given extra importance everyone is equal before the uh, election process so election because everyone any person above 18 years will have the same weightage same be it a man or a woman or be it any caste be it any uh, rich or poor anyone everyone is equal in terms of election so e stands for election and equality <coughs> and representation of i is to represent india so the two letters e and i i represents india i represent equal equality and election process that is uh, the first point we discussed about tricolor and lastly the overall composition of the logo is a representation of evm what is evm electronic voting machine in india earlier ballot voting that is paper based voting was done but nowadays we have evms electronic voting machines where you go and press the button if you want to cast your vote right so the composition of evm is something similar you have the names of the various parties or people contesting and then you have these dots where you buttons where you need to press so the logo is inspired from the design of evm so that is the first important independent agency election commission of india second important independent agency that is under category 4 this is you the national human rights commission 
NHRC. So the logo of National Human Rights Commission uses those two palms which basically symbolize the human rights with the representation of this flower with petals at the bottom and curves at the top. Color used here is blue and the motto, motto of this organization is may all live happily in Sanskrit. The same motto is written at the bottom of this logo. That is the second important independent agency. The third and final important central government or sorry independent agency. So we're looking into the fourth category. The last one under this fourth category is Supreme Court of India. That is not a part of state or central government. It is an independent agency. The logo of Supreme Court of India uses the national emblem in the center. National emblem of India with the Dharma Chakra on the top. We will study about this Dharma Chakra and the Indian, uh, the national emblem of India when we study Buddhist architecture moving further because all these elements are taken from Buddhist architecture. So you as people getting into the field of architecture, it is important to understand all these symbols and the origin. Where was this lion capital taken from? This lion emblem, where is it taken from? It was from the Ashoka's reign from Sarnath. Right from Sarnath Stupa, we'll study that in Buddhist architecture. So the Supreme Court's logo uses the national emblem with the Dharma Chakra, which has 24 spokes in it, 24 lines in it. The national flag of India uses 24 lines, 24 spoke Dharma Chakra, and at the bottom there is a Sanskrit motto, which essentially stands for "When there is justice, there is victory." In Sanskrit, it is written "Yato Dharma Tato Jayaha," which means "When there is justice, there is victory." So that is the motto of Supreme Court of India, which is represented in the logo. Some In some competitive exams, you can get questions on the motto of organizations as well. So you can have a, under, whenever you have a motto, you can have a look at it and remember that as well. So that is the fourth set, fourth set of logos where we studied independent agencies. So first we covered automobile logos. Uh, in the first set of logos, we covered automobile logos. In the second set of logos, we discussed some central government agencies. Third set, we discussed some banking sector logos. Fourth set of agencies, we, uh, companies or logos, we looked into inter, uh, the independent agencies. Categorizing is important because there are questions where they give you a logo and ask you which category it comes under. So remember these categories, so follow this category wise based study for your preparation for NATA examination. Now that brings us to the fifth set of logos. Now you see the level of efforts we are putting into this categorization and explaining you and we already have been receiving a lot of appreciation on our previous videos also and that really makes us very much happy. If you feel you are learning from these videos, do share it with your friends. Ask them to also learn if they are looking for a NATA preparation and also comment down whatever you feel you can give your suggestion, you whatever you like in our videos, you can be specific on that. That really encourages us and because we are putting in such efforts, it sometimes takes us time. We try to be regular, we try to put at least two new videos each week, but sometimes it takes time because of the Involve, involvement of the team in it and the efforts we put into it it takes time to do that but yeah we will try from moving ahead also we will try our best to put in two new videos each week so do follow this channel and uh, learn from what we are teaching you here so that is important continual continual preparation for nata that is important let us now move on to the fifth set of logos or fifth set of uh, uh, lo uh, logos which come under this category that is central government events and schemes there are some central government events and schemes. Let us look into some important ones. First and foremost, the most important central government event or event which was popularized or which was uh, promoted by the central government was the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa, which recently, which is actually still under process. So this started from 12th March 2021 and it is going on up to 15th August 2023 to celebrate the 75 years of independence. Right. So this is the, the logo of 75 years of independence. So to commemorate the 75 years of independence, there is Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa and this is the logo for it. Comment on your answer. What type of font you see in all the logos here? Be it Digital India, be it Make in India, be it Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa or Smart City. I told you more than 90% or 95% of all the fonts we discuss will be based on font without extensions. Font without extensions are called as, comment on your answer in the uh, <clears throat> uh, comment section of this particular video. So the first important 
सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इवेंट और स्कीम इज आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव विच इज कॉमोमेटिंग दी फाइव इयर्स ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस विच रिप्रेजेंट इंडियन ट्राई कलर द फ्लैग एंड सेवेंटी फाइव द नंबर सेवेंटी फाइव ऑल्सो इज रिटर्न विद द टैग लाइन आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव एट द बॉटम कलर स्कीम यूज हियर द ट्राई कलर एंड गोल्ड दैट इज द कलर स्कीम यूज इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लोगो दैट इज नंबर वन सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट लोगो विद रिस्पेक्ट टू सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्कीम इज द स्मार्ट सिटी मिशन so smart city mission is the tagline is mission transform nation smart city mission is an inter, is a central government scheme which focused on selecting or developing 100 smart cities in country so there uh, it was a competition based selection 100 large cities were selected throughout the country on all, in all the states they were equally distributed along all the state all the 29 states of country and then smart cities 100 smart cities were developed so this is the logo for smart city mission and the representation so in most of the central government events and schemes you see representation of tricolor there is representation of tricolor in azadi ka amrit mahotsav representation of tricolor in smart city mission representation of tricolor in digital india logo representation of tricolor even here in swachh bharat logo so in most of the central government schemes and uh, events you will find so try to look for those common string in each group see what is common and try to link with it right that is important so the meaning of this logo for smart city mission is building india so there are building blocks lot of squares are composed to form this butterfly pattern so that represents the building blocks so it is basically a butterfly logo using building blocks the color scheme is inspired from tricolor and the motto here is mission transform nation because smart city is a mission to transform 100 cities and make them smart cities some other important central government events and schemes are listed down here you can take this as your base and learn further in the free study resources also you will find even more uh, list of central government events and schemes so learn from that and also you can purchase a study material set where we have included all the important logos with details uh, given in it so you can use that as your reference for your further study so just to go, uh, take you through this is the logo for make in india which is a central government uh, promotion scheme or event basically to promote the manufacturing sector in india it is representing a lion symbol which basically stands for power and it is developed using cogs and gears it represents a lion formed out of gears the next one this is the logo for swachh bharat abhiyan swachh bharat abhiyan uh, was launched on the birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi the father of nation and the spectacles used here that is a representative of mahatma gandhi and it is said that mahatma gandhi stood for cleanliness and uh, shramdan basically is cleanliness so this uh, swachh bharat abhiyan which is basically focused on cleanliness in the country it uses the logo of the spectacles of mahatma gandhi with the representation of tricolor in the center that is uh, the fourth one fifth one is digital india digital india is again a central government scheme where they promote digital uh, connectiveness internet connectivity in the country so you see the symbol of wifi represented here and most importantly using tricolor what is common in all these logos except for make in india common thing is everywhere you, feel, you see representation of tricolor the color scheme is based out of tricolor that is the saffron white and green which is the part of indian national flag so that is the fifth set of central government events and schemes uh, moving further to the next set number 6 armed forces in india armed forces basically with respect to army navy and air force so these are the logos for these armed forces in the country uh, the first one we will be looking into is indian army the logo of indian army uses a red background with gold national emblem with two crossing swords that is indian army's logo it is the national emblem with crossing swords the representation is gold or yellow on the red background that is number 1 first armed force or armed uh, forces in india first one is indian army second one is indian navy the logo of indian navy is taken from the royal navy also actually before independence there was royal navy in india the logo was much similar but instead of national emblem there was the crown the england the queen or king's crown was represented on top of this logo so after independence that crown was replaced by the national emblem of india because we got our independence in 1947 but the remaining part of the logo is similar and this symbol this logo of indian navy uses navy blue color from the name itself you understand navy blue and also yellow so the color is yellow gold again 
with navy blue and the representation of the anchor which is important in navy anchoring ships was a very important aspect right so uh, the post post independence the crown was replaced by the national emblem as i told you so this is the logo for indian navy and the number 3 third one is indian air force indian air force again is based out of uh, the colors of yellow or gold with sky blue here here it was navy blue here it is sky blue because air force is basically based out of use uh, flying squadrons right so uh, indian air force the logo is representing a national emblem on the top and himalayan eagle flying himalayan eagle is represented in the indian air force logo and the motto here is touch the sky with glory even here there is a motto of uh, indian navy which is taken from vedas and here there's a motto which is taken from mahabharat so uh, actually from bhagavad gita so uh, which is a part of mahabharat itself right so that is the motto of uh, indian air force which is represented at the bottom so color scheme gold and sky blue so these are the armed forces in india try to remember the logo for indian navy indian navy indian army and indian air force you can get questions like identify the logo which is not in this set if they give you these three these fall under the same set of armed forces in india right so that is the sixth grouping of important logos armed forces next one number 7 is some important state government emblems or state government logos in the country now we have tried to include almost what almost all what is important all the categories so as i told you we have an exhaustive list of 20 different sets don't stop here take these as your base and learn further put in your add in your own logos because there are there are total there are no six states right we just have a six set six important uh, state emblems here because there is also one more reason in the study material you will find the full list of all the state emblems most state emblem most states use national emblem of india the the lion emblem of india itself some states have their own so we have added those uh, emblems which are not uh directly the national emblem even here you see the representation of national emblem in these logos as well but other states most of the states directly use the national emblem of india however you will get the full list in our study material so use this as the base again and learn from here that is very crucial so the seventh set is the set of state government emblems or logos let us look into the ones uh, one let us look into some important ones one by one the first one is for uttar pradesh The state emblem of Uttar Pradesh represents two fish with a bow and arrow in the center. So try to remember that logo, that or that uh, composition that is for Uttar Pradesh number one. Second one is for Odisha. This is the state em state emblem of Odisha. In these emblems, let me discuss the aspects which are overlapping or which are uh, important from architecture point of view. Right. So the representation of the logo of Odisha. There is a horse and a warrior. this horse and warrior has a link with architecture mainly from konark sun temple so this uh, horse and warrior this sculpture is taken from konark konark is a site where you have sun temple which is a very important masterpiece in architecture indian architecture temple architecture so konark sun temple uh, is the source of this emblem where the horse and warrior is taken in the odisha's logo so let me point out to those aspects which are linked with architecture here the third important state emblem or logo is that of tamil nadu and the state emblem of tamil nadu also represents a architectural marvel in the background and that is representation of a south indian temple we will study in detail about temple architecture in the next module where there is a separate lecture on hindu temples and types of hindu temples south indian hindu temples are known as dravidian architecture style or dravidian style of temple so this is a dravidian style temple gateway which is called as gopuram you will understand what is gopuram in the next module when we study about the hindu temple architecture in detail so representation of an architectural marvel that is gopuram is represented in the state emblem of tamil nadu next fourth one is the state emblem of telangana the newest state in the country so uh, telangana emblem uses again some architectural marvels in its low in its motto there is a small representation of charminar charminar is one of the most popular buildings in hyderabad uh, of the uh, uh, so you, 
in the city in the old city of hyderabad you have this chaminar which is represented in this logo telangana's capital is hyderabad so you have chaminar and then this kakatiya gateway this gateway of the uh, telangana emblem is known as kakatiya gateway kakatiya gateway and chaminar so if you get a question like charminar is represented in the state emblem of which state if you get such question you can remember charminar is located in hyderabad so it hyderabad is the capital of telangana so it is represented in the state logo or state emblem of telangana that way you can remember try to remember the location of important buildings that is also asked in nata exam that is fourth fifth and sixth here this is the state emblem of nagaland where the representation of yak can be seen which is a native of that region and this last one this is the logo of maharashtra where there is a representation of a lamp right so you can go through the further list of other state government logos and emblems in the study material so moving further to the next set some important psus what are psus public sector undertakings now you can read in your self study even in the study material we have added it there are a set of psus which are called as maharatnas the richest psus in india are generally called as maharatnas so look into the logos of those Maha even coal india is maharatna sale is a maharatna company psu so look into those uh, maharatna logos that is something which you can do so here there are uh, six important psu logos represented last year's nata question there was a question on this logo they did not give this logo directly a composition was created using these logos and they asked this is the logo this composition is created using logo of which of the following options were like bank logo public sector undertaking so you have to remember this is a public sector undertaking logo and that is the major reason we are grouping into the grouping the logos and then studying the first one which you see here this is the logo of coal india which is used which is created using this quadrilaterals of black color triangles and quadrilaterals of black color because black represents coal that is coal india which works which is a public sector undertaking in the sector of coal sale is steel authority of india limited it is it, it works in the sector of steel manufacturing ongc oil and natural gas corporation bhl is bharat heavy electronics uh, limited so heavy electricals limited actually so it manufactures these uh, turbines and other powerhouse equipment this is ntpc national thermal power corporation bsnl you all know it basically is telecommunication uh, agency of the country so try to look into the logos try to remember that they fall under under psus and again look into all the fonts here what are they are they serif or sans serif you can you already know the answer i told you more than 95 percent of the logos always use sans serif fonts itself without any extension sans serif right all all these are sans serif fonts itself that is also important in analyzing the logos moving further to the next set that is the ninth set of uh important logos not uh not something to focus on in much detail but you can add it into your study that is some important educational institutions there is one important so there are uh, there are some uh, seven important educational institutions this is the logo of kendriya vidyalaya which shows the rising sun i'm not going into detail of each of these logos i just will add two points here first and very important is this logo of aims aims is a medical it is an educational institution medicine sector so the logo of aims uses this this is something which is common in almost all medical agencies not only in aims even in the logo moving further we will study about un agencies united nations the world based agencies there is world health organization recently after pandemic world health organization who was all, always in news giving guidelines for people how covid protocols and all recommendations and all the logo of world health organization also uses the snake with a staff or a stick right not only that even indian medical association logo also uses a similar so this symbolism of a stick in the center with a snake either one or two snakes that is a symbolism related to the medicine sector because it is said that the stick and snake symbolism is associated with the greek god of healing so because of greek god of healing this symbolism came to be associated with medicine and also healthcare sector so the logo of aims also uses that circular logo with a central staff with a flower on the top and these two spiraling snakes which is a representation of the greek god of healing and as i told you this is common in almost all medicine based organizations or health based organizations 
that is one point you can remember something common so make a note of this stick and snake snake logos are seen in organizations related to medicine example aims indian medical association or say uh, world health organization and all these logos you will find a stick and a snake in the center and here under educational institutions there are three school of planning because we are in the field of architecture now you need to remember school of planning and architecture spa there are three spas in india spa delhi spa bhopal and vijayawada so i've added those also into your list you can try to in your self study try to analyze or look into the details of why these logos are used this way the, i'll just add i'll tell you just one interesting point but you can study for yourself and add these point into your uh, understanding of the logos in SPA Vijayawada, there is a line which is drawn at 23 and a half degrees. Why is this line creating this angle of 23 and a half degrees? That is because the tilt of earth, when earth rotates on its own axis, it rotates at a 23 and a half degrees angle approximately. That is the reason this 23 and a half line is drawn in the logo of SPA Vijayawada. So you can look into such details of, uh, details of the development of these logos not only SPS but other logos also this is IIT Guwahati this is IIT Madras some important logos are added here but again two take key, two key takeaways in this which I discussed number one remember that the snake and standard stake and snake and stick of iconography or symbolism is associated with the logos in the medicine sector that is number one number two I told you about SPA Vijayawada's logo similarly study about the other logos listed in this set over here so that is the ninth set of logos educational institutions it is very crucial that you maintain your running notes and also have a structured way of study like what we are doing don't stop here build from this basic foundation and learn further and for that the best study resource which you can access is kp classes study resources so when you purchase a study resources all this content all the important logos you, you need not study anything other than what is given in our books that is all what is important for NATA and GE preparation. Not only that, even in this lecture series, we are trying to induce as much as possible with respect to what is important for your preparation. Uh, if, for example, you are planning to prepare for NATA and GE, and if, say, you heard about some coaching somewhere and you want to take classes, physical classes or online classes, if you're planning for that, all the coaching centers for NATA and GE preparation, they give you demo classes. Just go and attend the demo lecture whichever subject demo class you're taking just come back and watch that recording on this youtube channel on this 51 day course and you yourself will understand if what we are teaching is sufficient or not and what is the quality which we are providing here and how the quality is far apart from the others which which the coaching centers are providing you at paid basis right we also have a coaching classes but that is not the, so we cover everything in the free lectures here as well but in the coaching classes we take this and build it more further you understand the quality which we are imparting here right so anyways so try to analyze before joining any coaching and just see if they are giving you everything or not we have a separate video where we explained everything with respect to the structure which we are following here in the 51 day course what are the topics we are covering you can also check what are the topics covered in a given coaching before joining that is very crucial just see what they are teaching are they covering the full syllabus or not ask the lecture plan uh, align it and check if they are covering all the 51 topics which we are covering in this video that will also be helpful for you so in fact in this exercise you yourself will understand there is no necessity to join any coaching you can learn from this free lecture series here and make use of our study resources like study material test series again from somewhere some from sources which are reliable like us right so you can contact ap classes and purchase a study material study guide test series for your self preparation other than this lecture series anyways let me take further to the 10th set we are almost toward 50 percent of this uh, session of this video as i told you there are a total of 20 sets so 10th set let us discuss about the electronics mainly based out of mobile phones or smartphones companies or uh, logos associated with smartphones the first one apple the logo of apple literally uses representation of an apple with the bite over here and the bite part is compensated by providing a leaf to create an asymmetrical balance we in we discussed a in detail analysis of the logo of apple in day one video where we studied about principles of design and asymmetrical balance if you have not yet watched that video go and watch day one video first because it is a progressive way in which we are going about these topics 
go and learn uh, and uh, just recall how we discussed about asymmetrical balance of the apple's logo in that lecture so that is number one and why uh, apple uses that representation of apple in its logo because it is said to have to, to have taken inspiration from the apple which was an important which played an important role in discovery of gravity uh, there's this famous story that uh, Newton was sitting below an apple tree and the apple falls on his head. That's when he got that idea of gravity, right? So that is the uh, origin of the logo of Apple. That is the first important mobile brand, telephone brand or mobile phone brand here. Second important electronic or mobile phone brand we are looking into is Motorola. There was a question on the logo of Motorola last, last to last year in NATA examination. The logo of Motorola represents M with a representation of forming two peaks it symbolizes peaks and it is said so the brand itself motorola the company itself says they use this logo to denote that they want to reach peaks peaks as in mountains right so mountain representation with letter m forming in it that is second third important uh, smartphone brand here is mi uh, or xiaomi the company xiaomi uses mi representation in it and mi they on their website company's website say mi stands for mobile internet or mission impossible so they also want to uh, break the boundaries of something which is possible and reach impossible right so that's the representation of the logo some other brands of uh, companies or mobile electronic brands are shown here vivo you can see again it is a sans serif font without any extensions and this is oneplus the logo or brand of oneplus which forms a red square where there's a plus at the bottom at the top right hand corner but it still forms the square boundary so try to analyze the colors the meaning and the uh, shapes and the types of font used in the logos that is the best way you can prepare about various important logos moving on to the next one uh, this is a representation of all the books which we are providing to contact you can contact us on the number displayed on the screen over there and you can purchase a study material set where we have compiled all the important notes for all the topics of nata and je preparation so moving on to the next set number 11 that is electronic other electronic companies just have a look at the logos on this particular slide and you will see the domination of blue color i already told you more than 30 per many researches show 30 to 40 percent of all the logos in the world are based out of blue and shades of blue and because blue represents trust so blue star samsung voltas voltas is a tata company and in fact most of the tata companies like tata consultancy services tata steel they all use use the same blue colored logo so that is one point you can see and the second point you can observe is voltas samsung blue star symphony godrej all these logos all these logos are based out of sans serif font there are no extensions except for ifb in IFB, you see that there are these extensions. These extensions are basically making it mainly this one at F. You can see F is not just a line, but there's an extension like this at F. So this extension makes it a serif font. Serif font is very rare in logos. And one example where you find a serif font is IFB. So remember that exception that is important. So that is uh, some important brands, electronic brands like Blue Star, Samsung, Voltas, IFB, Godrej, LG and Symphony right so symphony also uses this asymmetrical logo uh, lg also lg uses a circular logo with representation of l and g in it right so you can have a look at the important electronic logos that brings us to the next 12th set of important logos that is household fmcg what is fmcg fast moving consumer goods so uh, for example <clears throat> Uh, the food uh, biscuits which you consume or say surf excel surf excel is a brand of this company hul horlicks it is a brand of this company hul right so uh, these fast food consumer goods in your houses such companies number one is britannia and if you see uh, not only britannia and parley many food based companies use red colors blue is the most widely used color but in food based color here parley is in the sector of manufacturing biscuits and all even britannia so in food based companies you generally have red color also used zomato or say burger king mcdonald's we we'll look into those food companies also moving further red is a common color in food based companies remember that point so the logo of britannia it symbolizes bird the freedom at the bottom freedom to eat 
freedom to choose whenever and wherever you want to enjoy your food that is the symbolism as per the company's website britannia and the wings one is a yellow wing and the other is a green wing the yellow represents fun and green represents health that is the representation or meaning of this logo of britannia then you have nestle nestle represents the name the word nestle is actually translates to nest in english so nestle represents that nest with a mother bird feeding it so it represents a family mother with children and in a nest so nestle wants to create that homeliness and trust by using blue color right so that is representation of a family bird family in a nest that is the logo of nestle logo of dabur uses a trunk showing a showing a strong family three people represented in the trunk with branching out branches out of it so it is a strong family from where there is a lot of branch coming out so branching out so that is the logo symbolism of logo of dabur so if if you get a question of identify the correct logo of dabur this is the aspect where you need to look into in the in the trunk you need to find those people three people right three people with hands raising out that is the symbolism then you have hul hindustan unilever limited which is a which is one of the largest fmcg manufacturers in company uh, manufacturing uh, fmcg uh, manufacturing company in india all these brands as i told you surf excel horlex boost all these are owned by even dove all these are owned by hul hindustan unilever limited where the logo is represented in the form of a u with various elements in it you see a, a spoon a bird well, there are various elements fit in you have a bird here you have an ice cream here you have a uh you have a spoon over here some aquatic fish over here so various elements are fit into the shape of a u that is hindustan unilever limited and last is parle which again as a food based brand so red color remember the color associate i told you most of the logos are blue in color which which basically shows trust and food based logos you generally find it in red color also uh that is the 12th set moving on to the next 13th set is the healthcare sector now tell me what is the most important aspect of healthcare sector trust without trust will you go to any hospital without trust or without dependability will you go and take some medicine no so any company in healthcare sector i'm not saying 100% this rule is followed but at least in the four examples which we are looking here in the healthcare sector the comp the logos are based out of blue and in most cases also healthcare sector companies use blue colored logos including max healthcare which is a hospital branch or which is a hospital network in india mainly centered around delhi apollo hospitals which is a nationwide uh, hospital brand in the country both use uh, blue colored logos Sipla is a very famous pharmaceutical company which manufactures medicine which again uses a blue colored logo with a sans serif font no extensions no extensions so sans serif for mainly in, if it is a serif font mainly in p you will find extensions like this you don't have those extensions so it is a serif font uh, so this is serum institute of india which is a max vaccine manufacturer recently uh, during the pandemic vaccines covaxin covid shield these were the two most widely used vaccines in india covid shield in india was manufactured by sii sii is serum institute of india and this question was asked in nata 2022 they asked which of the following is a logo uh, uh, so sii this logo was given and they asked this logo belongs to which to which of the following it is a vaccine manufacturer serum institute of india is a vaccine manufacturer which uses a blue colored logo with the initials sii serum institute of india in a circle right so that is healthcare sector some important brands or companies in the healthcare sector important logos further study of healthcare sector logos purchase a study material we have a in depth study of all the important logos under each of these categories that is number 13 so moving to the next set the 14th set of 14th set of logos professional bodies professional what who are professionals doctors architects planners or say chartered accountants lawyers all these are professionals so let us look into some important professional bodies this first one this is uh, the logo for icai which is a body which accredits or certifies chartered accountants in india it uses a logo with the symbol of garuda garuda is basically the vehicle of vishnu the one of the most important gods in the trilogy in hinduism so this symbolism of garuda is used in the logo of icai 
Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. That is the logo of ICAI. And ICII published a special logo just for the professionals of chartered accountants. Chartered accountant, any chartered accountant in the country, on the name board, on the cards, they can use this symbol. This symbol is associated with chartered accountant, CA, chartered accountant. So what is the symbolism of chartered accountant? A blue colored CA which are joined together and there is a green tick, reverse tick. A green reverse tick which forms the part of A. And if you carefully observe, there is one additional line parallel to the A running here. So that is the detail of CA's logo, right? CA Chartered Accountant. Next important professional body is Indian Medical Association. I told you this point earlier also when we were discussing about the logo of AIMS in the educational institutions. What did I tell you? In the medicine based organizations, you will have representation of the central stick with spiraling snakes. This is the logo of Indian Medical Association and use of that spiraling snakes is associated with the Greek god of healing I told you. That is Indian Medical Association, the second important professional body. Third important professional body is Bar Council of India which is associated with lawyers. It represents the map of India with the words written Bar Council of India. Again, you can guess it correctly. Again, it is a sans serif font in the center of it. Next, Council of Architecture. You all are aspiring to be architects or planners. So these are professional bodies in the field of architecture and planning. COA, Council of Architecture. The logo of it uses C and A, Council of Architecture with parallel letters. So you have double C, C and a parallelly running C in the center of it. Similarly, A with a parallelly running A inside it. So that is how you can identify the logo of COA. In fact, the NATA examination also is conducted by the same authority, Council of Architecture. It is. It will not be a wonder if they ask you a question on the logo of COA itself sometime. Moving further, in ITPI, Institute of Town Planners India, Institute of Town Planners India, ITPI again is a professional body associated with town planners. And what is the symbolism associated with it? You have a grid layout in the center. When we study history of architecture and when we mainly will study about the Harappa Mohenjo-Daro, I will uh, in that lecture we will study about this uh, grid based planning. In planning, historically grid out grid planning with intersecting angles like this, this has always been important in planning even in ancient Greek cities, even in Harappa Mohenjo-Daro that is Indus Valley cities. So that representation of grid based planning is used in the center of this ITPI because ITPI is a professional body for planners right so that is the set of professional bodies in india so we discussed ca ima that is indian medical association bar council of india council of architecture and itp these are some professional bodies in the country that is the set of 14th set of logos let us move on to the next 15th set of logos which again is a one of the most important in the last two years 2021 nata 2022 NATA, both the exams you have question on the logo of Google. It is one of the most important uh, repeated part in NATA examination. So all these logos are important from the 15th group that is Internet and Technology. So let us look into the important logos of Internet and Technology. But before I start again, I'll ask you the same question. Be it the logo of Netflix, Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, which is the parent company of Facebook now, Alphabet, Google and all these logos. What type of fonts are these? Serif or sans serif? Do you have extension or, extensions or not? That is something which you need to observe and remember. That is very crucial in analyzing logos. Again, I'm repeating that. So moving on to the uh, important internet and technology based companies. First one is Alphabet. Alphabet now is the parent company of Google. Initially, it was Google with a lot of branches below it. But now uh, Google itself is under the parent company of Alphabet and the logo of Alphabet is pretty simple. Just in red color, the name of alphabet is written in the same font as that of Google. Google uses colorful blue. There was a question in Nata in the order. Blue, red, yellow, blue, green and red. This order was asked in Nata once. So this is the correct order. And the font used in here in, the, in both Google and also its parent company alphabet. The name of this font is Product Sans. The name, you can remember the name of this font. The font name used in Google and the logo of alphabet. The name of that font is Product Sans. Why Sans? Because it is a sans serif font. What is sans serif? Without extension, right? You don't have extensions at the end of these alphabet. If it have been a serif font, you will find extensions like this. 
like this right there are no extensions so it is a sans serif font and the name of that font is product sans that is something which you can remember one small detail which generally people miss out in the logo of google if there was a question once in nata exam they gave four options of google's logo and asked which is the correct option so the things which you need to look into is something which is not following a pattern so if you see all these are of same font product sans but just in the logo of google if you just see the e part is the e in this alphabet and e in google is it same obviously no there is a slight tilt so look into those details you can get a question to identify correct logo of google and instead of having that tilted e they will give you the actual normal e of product sans font so in that way you can identify the correct and incorrect in the correct logo of google the e will be slightly uh, tilted it is a rotated version of pro so till l it is perfect usage of product sans but the e it is not a product so uh, product sans font the e is slightly tilted look into that detail and remember that that is also very important next important internet internet based company is meta meta uses that symbolism of a blue infinite loop you all know the symbolism of infinity so because they want to represent that they will uh, they, the the company meta stands for infinite possibilities so the symbolism of meta it is not a symmetrical infinity but it uh, it is uh, it is not a bisymmetrical it's not like symmetrical both ways like this right it is not symmetrical on the horizontal line why to represent m so this basically represents kind of m meta and it is also that infinite loop that is meta's logo under this parent company of meta there are a lot of other uh, companies or uh, say groups like facebook instagram whatsapp all these are owned by meta itself so re remember the logos this is the logo for facebook instagram which uses that colorful camera based logo because instagram is known for its picture based community right whatsapp it is a messaging app so you have that message icon in its logo so remember the logos remember the parent company meta then you have microsoft microsoft also uses that simple four square logo with red green blue and yellow which are primary color red yellow and blue are primary colors with green green one secondary color so primary is and green along with it that is representation of the logo of microsoft amazon the logo again is a sans serif font where there is a smile face drawn connecting a to z and the symbolism of this logo is amazon will sell everything a to z that is the uh, that was the original idea of the logo of amazon connecting a to z with a smile making everyone happy sell everything from a to z and make everyone happy that is the motto of amazon that is represented in this logo and then one more technology based company is netflix where the logo is based out of a red n a capital n represented in its logo uh, one thing you can identify in netflix logo so as i told you in google's logo i told you look into details which are not following the pattern something slightly different look into those things what is something which is slightly different from a standard pattern in netflix the bottom is not straight the top is a straight line of the font but the bottom it forms a curve so look into those details if the, if you have four options of incorrect netflix probably one option would be where the bottom also is straight so even in your self study when you're studying about various logos you have to look for details which are not following the pattern in any given logo so correct google logo will have the tilted e correct netflix logo will have a curvilinear base so look for those details that is very important in your preparation for logo and symbol based topics that is the 15th set of important logos internet and technology based companies moving on to the next 16th set food brands a while ago when i was discussing about fmcg brands i showed you the logo of britannia and parley i told you britannia and parley use red color what is common because they sell biscuits so uh, cookies and biscuits mainly food brands also the popular color in food brands is red across the world red is a popular blue is a popular color for general logos but especially for food brands like zomato burger king mcdonalds uh, even in dominos you have that red part and red basically is a common color used in the food brands mainly to make them stand out red is something which is fierce and makes something stand out right so swiggy is uh, the logo of swiggy is based out of pinning a location because they want to represent that they can deliver to all the locations they basically bring you food uh, there was a question in nata exam on the logo of burger king remember the color composition used here orange or yellow based orange and red that is the color scheme used in burger king and also in mcdonalds 
सेम कलर स्कीम रिमेम्बर इट इज येलो एंड रेड येलो एंड रेड दैट इज द कलर स्कीम ऑफ बोथ बर्गर किंग एंड मैकडोनल्ड टू मेजर बर्गर ब्रांड्स इन द वर्ल्ड डोमिनोज यू ऑल आई प्रोबेबली थिंक यू नो वॉट इज डोमिनोज डोमिनोज ओरिजिनली इज अ गेम विच यूज दो बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स so that is the reason you have these dominos building blocks used in the logo of this pizza based company dominos so these are some famous food brands and their logos moving on to the next set 17th set of important logos is un agencies now i'll not teach you each and every un agency here this is the logo of united nations it uses those two olive branches which represents unity and peace and the world map world map drawn from the top from the north pole the complete world map is shown that is the main logo of united nations and these are various un agencies what is common in all these there are some two things which are mainly common number one use of those interlacing olive branches interlacing olive branches is seen almost in each and every logo these interlacing olive branches become a symbol for peace unity and also represent united nations from the name itself you know united nations is a world based organization where it stands for unity of all the countries so that is number one second thing which is common is all these almost all except for unesco all the others use blue shade so blue is a symbol for trust and peace so trust and peace is basically the what is the use of why was united nation formed to basically bring unity in the world and bring peace to avoid world war 3 that is the main motto of forming united nations so that is the reason all of these organizations use blue all these organizations use interlacing olive branches nata 2022 there was a question where they asked which of the following is the correct logo for united nation environment planning so unep the a question was asked on this logo how can you identify a logo of un no other option was uh, use was in blue color no other option was using interlacing olive branches we have solved that question in the logo video on the same youtube channel go and check how to answer logo based questions there's a video a small video on that watch that video you get a, you'll get a uh, understanding on that question you'll also get an overall understanding of what type of questions are asked in nata examination so that is unep united nation environment program where you have the same blue shade and interlacing olive branches one more point uh, overall i told you blue and olive branches these are the points you need to remember with respect to un agencies 17th set the last point in this particular uh, group of logos is the logo of world health organization earlier also i discussed about the logo of world health organization i told you in these medicine based organizations or the medicine based logos you will have a stick with a spiraling snake on it you can see a stick or a pin with a spiraling snake single snake here in the logo of aims and ima you have two spiraling snakes here there is a single snake so snake symbolism stick stick and snake symbolism is associated with health based agencies i told you right and the logo of unesco here this is based out of a greek temple elevation we will study what is greek temple and its elevation in the history of architecture classes moving further right so other than unesco all the logos of un organizations are based out of blue with olive branches remember this common feature that is very important in the 17th set of logos 18th set of logos is the famous unicorns in india what are unicorns unicorns are basically those startups in the country which cross a valuation of 1 billion dollar us dollar right so there are hundreds of such unicorns uh, in india hundreds of such unicorns in india some famous unicorns or some such startups which crossed 1 billion valuation in the country are mama earth which uses blue and green mainly because these uh, it is a cosmetic and shampoo based brand which mainly stands for eco friendliness using natural ayurvedic elements right so earth the name itself is using earth mama earth uses blue and green to bring that blue to bring trust green to represent that eco friendliness vedantu again is a unicorn which is based out of a uh, orange font again what is common in all these logos be it urban company farmeasy vedantu mama earth first cry all these again are sans serif fonts look into that detail very rarely you will find serif fonts and you have to remember whenever you come across a serif font like ferrari uses a serif font uh, uh ifb uses serif font all others till now all the logos we discussed till now in this lecture all are sans serif itself so there is further more list of these unicorns you can go and look uh, have a look at it and have an understanding on the logos of all the other unicorns as well in your self study that is the 18th set almost towards the end 
19th set of important logos are the sportswear and apparel. Four most important apparel and sportswear brands in the world are Adidas, Puma, Nike and Reebok. So let us get an understanding on these logos. The logo of Adidas actually it was updated earlier different logo for Adidas was used. But in the updated logo of Adidas there is a representation of a peak or a mountain. They want to represent that the future of this company it will be an uphill task but they will grow like a peak. That is the representation of peak in Adidas logo. Next the logo of Nike uses a tick which represents speed. Because Nike is a famous brand for manufacturing sportswear like shoe and all right. So they want to represent that uh, speed within their logo that is the origin of the Nike's logo. You can get questions like what is the meaning of this logo. So remember Adidas represents a mountain, mountain of possibilities and mount uphill task where they want to reach uh, 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 the peak. Nike the logo represents uh, speed. The logo of Puma represents active. Puma is actually an animal. It is a cougar which is which. Um, be it day or night this particular animal it can jump in a leap to almost 20 feet so that is a huge height so it is very active animal so puma uses that activeness in the leaping puma leaping cougar so this uh, activeness which is an important aspect of sports sportswear that is the reason puma uses that particular logo to represent activeness and finally reebok again the logo of reebok as per the company it represents the performance the representation like this a, a striking arrow into the path that is representing performance which is an important aspect of sportswear again one last point common thing in all these logos again all these fonts all these again are sans serif font like any other logo so remember 99 percent more than 95 percent of all the logos are using sans serif fonts till now moving further to the last set of important logos these are airline based companies in the country logo of area again all these are sans serif fonts no way you have a serif font and what is common in airline company logos generally they represent that uh, elements of an airplane the logo of indigo which is a budget air traveler it represents an airplane using dots the logo of air india it uses the tail of an airplane representing the tail of an airplane even the logo of go first it uses the representation of tail of an airplane the logo of SpiceJet it uses this diminishing circular layout which represents the movement of a flight and finally Vistara. Vistara was a, it is a uh, it is a airline company belonging to the Tata group and this was established as an airline carrier mainly for luxury. So that is the reason they use that grand luxurious color violet right violet and gold. So it basically gives that premium look to the logo premiumness because they are not a budget air traveler they are for premium air travel so these are some important airline companies uh, which use various colors ranging from blue to red and also mainly the representation of airplane and its elements in the composition so that is something which is common in the airline brands don't stop here this is not obviously 100% this should not be 100% of your preparation you should take the inputs from this lecture and build from here how to build from here you have to study from the study material free study resources we have added few more things other than what we discussed download the free study resources from the kp classes app and study there and other than that if you want to study uh, and get 100 percent confidence in your preparation the best way is to access the kp classes study material which is the best study material for nata and je preparation purchase that study material in which in a very structured manner we have discussed all the important logos so if you study even one page daily logos part don't sit and study all the logos in two or three days it should be a gradual process if you study thousands of logos on one day you will forget learn this lecture and daily develop this habit of learning at least five new logos add it into your notes purchase kp classes study material study one page of logos each day that will be sufficient for a nata preparation the remaining months of your preparation you will learn all the important logos and you will easily score two two mark questions are generally asked in logos generally three around three questions so for sure you can be assured that you will get six to seven marks directly from logo based questions without losing so develop that confidence 
put in that effort from your end we are putting the best possible effort from our end you should also put your efforts from your end and access the kp classes study material and test series also practice also is very important not just studying practicing is very important purchase the kp classes study material and practice the content whatever you're learning put it into practice and learn how to get an experience how you will uh, face the questions in the examination so these are the various opportunities which we are uh, providing for people studying for nada and je including the guide study guide study material test series so any of these resources which you want to access for your self preparation get in touch with us with the details given in the description of this video and stay tuned we will very soon put out the next video for day 4 and learn uh, important symbols which is a continuation of this lecture in the next day 4 video thank you i hope this video was helpful for you do like and subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends who are aspiring to become architects